Well, good morning, everybody, and Merry Christmas. It's good to see y'all here. How are we doing? All right, all right. Want to thank some of y'all who were at the concert on Friday. Man, that was so much fun. Did you guys have a great time? <laughs> Up in heaven. Woo! One, two. to 
shitting me <laughs> that's true that's true it's it's funny because I, I talked to my mom and dad this morning they were just like oh i heard it's cold down in florida and i was like yeah, it, it's extremely cold down here this morning dad and he's like well it's snowing and it's 14 below zero right here i was like well dad i guess i'm just gonna go down to the golf and do some uh, swimming for the day <laughs> while you shovel some snow <laughs> so um you know before we start this next song I, uh, I would like to uh, pray for Pastor Allen and his family. If you guys would pray for me, please, pray with me, please. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for blessing us with an awesome pastor. Um, and if you would, please so kindly look over him and his family, his mother-in-law and his beautiful wife. And, and if you would, so kindly, please, Lord, please bring them home safe and soon. 
We love you, Lord. We love you so much. Thank you so much for giving this church just the loving, the blessing, and, and giving us a worship group of talented people to be able to play the music and lift praise to you to let you know how much we all love you. We love you so much, Lord. Once again, thank you, and in your name we pray, amen. It's Christmas time, everybody. I was asking Matt to go ahead and, and realizing that I was supposed to say something before Matt comes up for children's moment. Um, it is so good to be with you today. Um, thank you, Jamel and, and uh, friends, for, for praying for um, uh, my mother-in-law and my wife. Uh, I'm very thankful to say that uh, my mother-in-law is in rehab up near Cincinnati. And um, hopefully and prayerfully, um, uh, Karen and, and she will be coming back south uh, Thursday. And then I will prayerfully and hopefully be able to collect 
Karen and bring her back home for Christmas on Friday. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm praying about that. I invite you to pray about that as well um, uh, because I'm looking forward to the worship plans we have over the next several days. Um, please plan with me uh, and bring others for Christmas Eve, uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, the, the 24th, uh, we will have candlelit communion service at 5 o'clock, and we invite folks to come, uh, kids, uh, bring your neighbors, bring others, 5 o'clock and 6.30. And after the 5 o'clock service, between the 5 and the 6.30 service, we're going to have uh, hot chocolate and cookies and snow, I'm told, um, uh, over in Hildreth Hall. And, um, and I hope that you'll plan on uh, coming for service, but also coming for fellowship uh, on, on Christmas Eve uh, as we come together at 5 o'clock and then at 6.30. And also, this year, it only happens every, I think the last time it happened was 2016, but Christmas Day is on a Sunday, and we will have a unified service, one service, at 10 a.m. Christmas morning, and then also the next Sunday is New Year's Day, uh, and we will have, again, a unified service on New Year's Day at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I hope that you will look forward with me to those experiences and and really it all comes to fruition and culmination as we head toward Christmas Eve and Christmas Day as we celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus. I hope that you have already filled out your connect card. If you're a, a first time guest with us, we want to thank you so much for being with us and we pray that you will sense and know the, the love of Christ uh, as we have come together here in worship. And, and, and uh, come back Christmas Eve. Come next Sunday for Christmas worship. Um, I would like to now invite Matt to come up. And uh, Matt, come and, and lead us and uh, invite our children. That's right. Any kiddos starting to fifth grade can come on up. And if we have any guests this morning, all of our volunteers have safe sanctuary training. And you'll be able to pick up your kiddo after the the 9.30 service upstairs in Taylor Hall. Uh, speaking of Taylor, I was sitting over there and the lights, you know, were going down and I saw this beacon of light coming over here and I was just so enthralled with Lorraine's necklace this morning. Isn't that awesome over there? That was just, I just, <laughs> I had to call you out. That was just really cool. She, she's always glowing though, isn't she? Yeah. Well, good morning, kiddos. It's good to see you guys this morning. And we've got now, how many candles are lit now? Five. Five. Five four. Four are lit, right? So, and then how many is left? One. One. That's right, Jay. So there's only one more week until Easter, right? One more. Yeah, so one more week until Easter, right? Mr. Matt, you don't know what you're talking about. Christmas, Christmas, what were we could tell Christmas? Well, have you ever gotten a gift for Christmas that you were just super, super excited about? Maybe it was something that you didn't even know you needed. I was like that for me when I was a kid. I got a little bow and arrow I didn't ask for, and it didn't have sharp ends on the, on the arrows. And I loved that gift that my aunt gave me when I was a kid. I didn't even ask for it, but she already knew that I wanted something like that. I would enjoy something like that. And that's kind of how it is during Christmas time. We may not have asked for, I'll, I'll give you guys, to, you can tell me what gifts you got when we go to kids' church, but we may not ask for certain things, but we, uh, we get them because somebody knows that we may need them or we may like them. And that's kind of how it is with the gift of Jesus. God knew how much we needed a Savior, and so he sent his little son uh, Jesus to be born in a, in a lonely stable, and he gave him to us so that one day he would eventually live out his life, die on the cross for our sins so that we can have a right relationship with him. And that's what Christmas is all about this morning. But before we talk more about that, we're going to say a quick word of prayer. So we can bow our heads, close our eyes. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the greatest gift and that we may continue to learn that despite all the things we get this Christmas, all the, all the goodies that we eat, that we remember that it's about you and about what you have done for us on the cross. Um, and, uh, and all started with this little baby in a manger. And we pray that we will remember that you are the greatest gift that we could ever receive. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, come follow me. God bless you guys. Thank you, Matt. Let me mention that, that uh, this, in just a little bit in the worship service following um, the, uh, God's word and the message, um, we, we will invite um, you to give. And, um, and as you give, um, remember also the Connect card and drop that in the offering basket um, when the basket comes, the ushers will come down uh, after the message, and, and um, we invite you to give to God at that time, bring his tithes and offerings. Um, we want to pray this morning, and, and uh, as we're praying together, um, indeed, I know that, that, that you, um, like me, you have uh, of people in your heart and mind, uh, friends, loved ones who have need for God's touch. I always think about people who've experienced the loss of a loved one this year. And, uh, and there are several people in our church family, and I know across YouTube and, and Facebook, um, there are people who've experienced loss of a loved one. And, and uh, we want to pray for them especially um, because uh, these holiday times uh, are dear times and and. And they can be painful in some respects. And let's remember to pray for folks who might be hurting at this time. Join with me and let's pray together. Holy God, we thank you for the varied gifts that come to us with the birth of Jesus, God incarnate. Lord, we thank you for hope, for love, for joy, and for peace. Lord, I pray today that, that your hope, love, joy, and peace would be full in every heart and mind. That we would realize in our own lives the many, many blessings and gifts that you've given to us and that you provide out of your deep and amazing grace. Lord, as we pray today and we thank you and praise you for, for how you bless and move, you are a great and mighty God and you're, you are a God full of love. In fact, you define love. And we ask that your love your comfort, your encouragement, your healing grace would be with those who are hurting, who are physically ill, those who are undergoing treatment or are in hospital or just home from the hospital. Bless them and be with them. Bring them healing and strength. Lord, we, we also remember and ask your touch and your comfort for those who are experiencing sadness because of loss of a loved one or a friend. And as we approach Christmas, those losses seem to um, mount up in our hearts and minds. And, and they need, these people need your comfort and encouragement. Surround them with others who will lift them up and help them. Lord, today as well, we are mindful of um, all of the ways that um, you are at work in our families, and we pray that you continue to bring your blessing for, the, for, for our families. Lord, bring people Christmas Eve and Christmas Day 
to worship, to celebrate, to mark the greatest event, the greatest epoch in human history when God became flesh and dwelt with us. And you were with us now by your spirit. Bless us at Christmas. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Evan. I tell you, I'm, I'm off my game. Last Sunday, I forgot the offering. And uh, this morning, I forgot children's, or forgot announcements. And, and, and I, I, I forgot about forgiveness in the Lord's Prayer. I, I'm, I don't know what's going on. I think there's just a lot going on, and that's part of the, part of the problem. I hope that you were able to be with us Friday night. I'm just curious, uh, how many were here for the concert on Friday evening? Oh, good crowd. Good, wonderful. And we had a wonderful crowd here. I, I want to, um, to commend uh, Jamel. There's Jamel down front. Um, and, uh, and this wonderful praise team for the ministry and the, the blessing that they brought to us as they honored Christ on Friday night. It was such a wonderful time. We had a wonderful crowd as well. They blessed us Friday night, and I'm thankful that that, that blessing doesn't happen just on rare occasions when we have a concert, but, but that God blesses us every week uh, in worship with, uh, with Jamel and this wonderful ministry team. And not only those who are on the stage, but, but uh, the folks who, who are in the, the media booth um, right back here or who are in the Facebook live stream booth in, that's just on the back hallway here and those who run the cameras, uh, they are such a blessing and they do that every week. And if you would like to be involved in any aspect of worship ministry that I've just mentioned, we would love to have you be involved. Uh, let one of us know on the staff, uh, contact Jamel or, or Nathan Purcell or me, and we'd be glad to, to get you plugged in to one of these ministries. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago during the announcement, I, I do want to underscore for you the plans that we have this coming week, this week, uh, particularly on Saturday as we uh, celebrate Christmas Eve. There is no better time, with the exception of Easter, there's, there's no better time to invite someone, to invite another family. Um, I have been asking you to be praying for people, that God would show you people that you should minister to and reach out to and invite, and, and invite them for Christmas Eve. Um, um, it's such a wonderful time for people to come into relationship with a church, but more than that, into a relationship with the Savior who was born at Christmas. I'm looking forward to Christmas Eve, and I'm looking forward to the, the hot chocolate fellowship after the 5 o'clock service. But remember, those services are 5 and 6.30 on Christmas Eve, and then, and then we will have uh, one service, unified service, on Christmas Day at 10 a.m. I'm looking forward so much to that worship time. Um, a few Sundays ago, on the Sunday after Thanksgiving, November 27th, we entered the season of Advent. And uh, the four Sundays leading up to Christmas Eve, and, and today is the fourth Sunday. And remember the word Advent comes from a Latin word, uh, Adventus, 
which, which means the coming or coming. And, and it points to and refers to the coming of Jesus born in Bethlehem. There's also an aspect of Advent that looks forward to the return of Jesus, the coming again of Christ uh, in God's day. And, 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 and during these Sundays of Advent, we have, we have reflected upon different aspects of the gift that God brings to us in, in Jesus who was born in Bethlehem at Christmas. Uh, we, we talked about hope and we've talked about love, joy, and today we talk about peace that comes through Jesus Christ. Last Sunday we talked about joy, real joy, biblical joy is not a sense of giddy happiness but rather is a deeper knowledge that Jesus is in control, that God is with us, and that he has carried us through difficulties of life, and he will continue to carry us. Uh, we, we, we have joy because Jesus was born at Christmas. We can trust in God. And now this morning... I'm so thankful for Sarah and Titus and Matea Toman as they opened our service by lighting the Advent candles and then reading the scripture for this Sunday, the Sunday of peace. And I'd like to read again for us as God's word for us today from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. God's word says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Friends, this is the word of God in Isaiah for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, in the Old Testament tradition, the prophets such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and others were, were persons upon whom God's Spirit had laid a message to give to God's people, the Israelites, the, the, the Jews. And in many cases, the content of the messages God gave through his prophets were words of warning, of coming judgment for the sins of the people. Some of the messages of the prophets were from God and they were words of hope and restoration for people. And then included in the words from God to the prophets and the messages that they proclaimed, and in this case, this morning in Isaiah chapter 9, in this passage that, that we just read, were, were messages that were predictive they talked about something that God was going to do in the future and not just to bring hope, not just to uh, give comforting words about restoration and reconciliation, but, but some of the messages of the prophets, and in this case from Isaiah, and there are other prophecies in the Old Testament, they were messianic prophecies. That is, they were prophecies of God through the prophet telling the people that a Messiah was coming. God's Savior was on the way. And this passage from Isaiah chapter 9 is a predictive or messianic prophecy about the coming of Jesus, God's ultimate plan to bring salvation to the world. I think it's really cool 
how this passage ends. I, I don't know if you saw the last sentence, but the passage ends with a very interesting sentence. It says, Isaiah says, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. That's an interesting sentence. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. What does that mean? What does zeal mean? Well, quite, quite frankly, what it means is that God told Isaiah to say to the people and to say to you and me, as he has this morning from Isaiah chapter 9, that a very intentional and motivated God, all-powerful, the only God there has ever been and ever will be, is motivated and very intentional about bringing this thing to pass. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. We can count on it. What is it that we can count on from God? Well, this very intentional and very motivated God, in Isaiah's words, written 700 years before Jesus was born, tell of a child who will be born who would serve as our leader and our Lord. And this child who would become our king, our Lord, will embody godly wisdom as the wonderful counselor. He will, empower, he will have the very nature of God's power as mighty God. And when I see that name, I think mighty God and I see big muscles. But, but God is even more powerful than big muscles. And, and be as a holy father to his children in faith as an eternal father. And be the founder and provider of something that each of us really needs. Peace. He will be the prince of peace. Isaiah then proclaims confidently of the greatness of his government and peace. There will be no end. Peace. The Oxford Dictionary defines peace in two ways. One, it says peace is a state or period in which there is no war. And also, peace is freedom from disturbance or tranquility. I, I have to tell you, I think that we can agree that these are indeed examples of peace, the absence of war or there not being any disturbance, tranqui tranquility. And we, we value freedom from disturbance or we value the absence of war. But the peace wrought in our lives by the action of Jesus, who was born at Christmas, his action, his work, brings a peace that goes beyond these normal definitions of peace. You know, <clears throat> I've known people in my life who believe that the deck is stacked against them. There are some people that feel that life is not fair and that someone is out to get them. And there are definitely dear souls that I have known and that I know now, people who feel that God is against them. They have developed this notion that maybe because of some sin in their past that God has his darts out and is throwing them at that person. Some people struggle with having peace at all in life. Have you known someone like this? And more importantly, and more to the point, are you one of those persons who feels that God has it against you? 
that the darts have just been flying. I, I have to tell you this morning, the exact opposite is true. This notion is the most tragic, destructive notion that I know of. And it's a lie of the devil that God is against you, that God has it out for you. The exact opposite is true. God is for us. God has done everything to bring us close to him. God loves you with a holy love, a pure love, a sacrificial love, no matter what. You know, throughout history, there has never been another religion or faith system whose God or gods did what our Almighty God has done. For the love of you and me and everybody who has ever been, is now, or ever will be, for the love of everybody, God sent his son Jesus to die upon the cross. And the death of Jesus paid the price of sin. And his death, his blood shed, if you will, covers sin. God has done everything possible to bring about that we would be able to be in relationship with Almighty God. Jesus covers sin. And so for those who think that God is against them and that God has, has, a, has a list and he's been checking it twice, it's simply, biblically, not true. The Apostle Paul writes, and I want to share just three real quick scriptures with you. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, and he says, Now in Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. Paul also wrote in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, and he said, Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Jesus himself tells us in chapter 14 of John, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, Jesus coming to us through his birth at Christmas brought peace to exist between God and humanity. It is not possible because of and through the love of God in Jesus Christ, it's not possible for God to be against us. He's for us. And I want to assure you in the name of Jesus Christ that God is not against anyone. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and through him we can have a peace that the world cannot overcome. We are at peace with God. Because Jesus was born at Christmas. You know, on Christmas Eve, when we gather for worship, I'm looking forward to the reading of what's called the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. And a vital part of the story of Jesus' birth, the Christmas story, contains the message of the angels to the shepherds. And I love the part of the story in Luke chapter 2 where the whole multitude of angels sings to the shepherds. 
And what they sing is so important for us to hear. As they sang about Jesus' birth, they sang glory to God in the highest, praising God. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace and goodwill toward humanity. That's peace for you and for me. Let's pray together. Would you join with me? Lord God, we are so thankful for the peace that passes understanding, the peace that we have with you, and the peace that we can have with everyone that you bring. Bear in our hearts and our minds and all around us this sense of peace that comes because Jesus was born at Christmas. In your name we pray, amen. Our ushers are coming down now. Please remember your Connect card, but let us give to God his tithes and our offerings. Let us honor God in response to all that God has given to us. Lord God, bless the gifts that we give. Receive them and fill each giver with your spirit, with your peace. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor.
I still feel like a little kid come Christmas. I'm so excited for, are we all excited for Christmas? Oh, yes, yes, and it is next week. Hallelujah. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 